Welcome. <clears throat> Excuse me, now I got a little frog in my throat. Welcome to this Facebook Live. We're going to talk about how and what does your personality need after divorce? What helps your personality emotionally? What helps you cope after separation and divorce? You might be divorced, you might be separated, or you might be watching just to help someone you know who's going through a tough time um, and a broken marriage. So I'm Georgia Schaefer, if we've never met before, and I'm a licensed psychologist in Pennsylvania, a professional certified coach, and I work with people who are separated and divorced and help them rebuild their lives. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. But what qualifies me the most to speak on this topic is I myself. Have, I know what it's like to go through a broken marriage. I know the upheaval it creates in your life. You wonder, you know, what just happened? I didn't, you know, plan for this. And I don't know about you, but I never thought as a little girl or a young teenager that, you know what, I'd like to grow up and someday be married and then get a divorce. <laughs> I know I never thought that. And I'm sure many of you didn't either. So that's not something we always see coming. But we're talking about the personalities today. So I want to say I'm also certified in several of the personality assessments out there. And there are a lot, uh, at least over 50, if not more, that inventories, assessments you can take to get an idea to help you understand your personality. Because what I found when I was going through the time of divorce, that when I understood my personality, who I was, and what would emotionally help me, strengthen me as I'm going through that challenging time, that was a valuable tool. And that's why I want to share it to you, with you. So understand, your personality affects everything. How you think how you react to different situations, your relationships, how you respond in this case to difficult, overwhelming losses, uh, like our marriage. So, how do you know what your personality is? Well, as I mentioned, there are different assessments out there. The one I'm gonna use, since this Facebook Live is only a brief period of time, I'm gonna use one of the most simple user-friendly assessments and it's called Wired That Way by Marita and Florence Littower. It's also one of the least expensive ones and it'll help you get a uh, uh, handle not only on your personality but on your children or your co-workers or the people you interact with in life. But this whole idea of the personalities, it dates back to Hippocrates the father of modern medicine. And when he noticed things, uh, people were different and he was trying to decide, well, what's the reason for that? And he decided it was the different fluids that flowed through our body. Well, science has long disproven that, but the names Hippocrates used, think names like sanguine, melancholy, phlegmatic, and choleric, they're Greek names, names that Hippocrates gave. And the Litowers, they then attached an adjective like the popular sanguine, the perfect melancholy, the powerful choleric, and the peaceful phlegmatic. So let me just give you a quick overview and then we're going to dive in. So he used the, uh, the idea of the sanguine for the spontaneous, high energy, people who know no stranger, strangers. They're creative. They love to live in the moment. They love to have fun. And then the total opposite is the perfect melancholy. These are the sensitive people, neat, meticulous, love to be organized. The powerful choleric, on the other hand, is that go-getter, get-it-done person. They like to be natural born, they're natural born leaders. They like to be in charge, even if they weren't put there. But they can set a goal and they can stay on that goal and achieve it. They love challenges. 
And then finally, the opposite of the choleric is the peaceful phlegmatic. If you watch the movie on Mr. Rogers, he's a perfect example of the peaceful phlegmatic. The layback, easygoing personality that everybody seems to like. So that's the four personalities, a quick overview that we're going to talk about today with this particular inventory of Wired That Way. But now I'm going to give you a little snippet. I want you to listen closely. It's a snippet of four different people and how they reacted to their divorce or separation. And as you listen to these little snippets of dialogue, what they said, consider well, which one matches you? Which one resonates with you? Or maybe somebody you know who's going through this kind of situation. What identifies them? So the first one is um, Whitney. She's the popular sanguine personality. I just talked about that high energy. And here's what Whitney said during her divorce. She said, it's been three months since my husband left me. She said, I feel so alone, and I will say all the personalities feel alone, but the sanguines especially. She said, I need to be around people. I want to grieve with people. My house has never been so quiet. And she said, I just feel like my friends have forgotten about me or disappeared because I don't hear from them anymore. All right, that's Whitney. Then there's the powerful choleric, Sam. These are the natural born leaders, goal setters, like to move forward. He told a friend after his divorce, he said, you know, I'm not the type that's going to sit around feeling sorry for myself. He said, I need to get this behind me and get it behind me as soon as possible so I can move on with my life. That's Sam. Then we have Allison. She's the perfect melancholy. She's more on the introvert side. And when she went through the separation, she said, how did I get here? I never planned it. Because remember, these are the people that like to plan and organize. And she said, I never planned this. How did I even get here? She said, it's all so overwhelming. She said, you know what? I just want to be left alone, stay in bed, and sort things out. And then finally, there's Jack. He's our peaceful phlegmatic. When his marriage ended after 31 years, and you'd be surprised how many people I work with, and it's not just five years, 10 years. They've been married a long time, have a lot of history. And he said after his uh, divorce, he said, it hurts a lot. But he said, it's hard for me to share my feelings. Um, he said, I just like to go for a hike by myself or baby play. The piano said, I'm trying to create for my children a stable, consistent environment. So I shared, and Jack again is the peaceful phlegmatic. So as you listen to those right now, which one do you resonate? Do you resonate with Whitney, who wanted to be a lot of around a lot of people? She needed that interaction. She was an extrovert. She's recharged by people. Or are you more like Allison? You want more time alone. And by the way, I want to say it's not healthy for any of the personalities to isolate themselves. But the peaceful phlegmatic, I mean, yeah, the peaceful phlegmatic and the perfect melancholy will want more chunks of time alone. Or are you more like Sam, who just, you know, you're not going to weep and wail forever. You want to move on. So type in the comments. Uh, which is your uh, personality? Does any of those resonate with you? So all four of these people, their marriage ended. But all four of their responses, as we just showed, are quite different. So Sam wanted to take charge of his problems. He wanted to get the best lawyer and move on. Jack preferred to stuff his feelings, thinking... You know, everything will work out on his own. In fact, he stuffs some things under the rug. Allison, she was more of an introvert. She wanted time alone. She wanted to get things organized. And Whitney, as I said, wanted to be around people. So that's an overview of the personalities. Now, 
I see Betty said she's a phlegmatic. We got Laura, who's so melancholy. My personality, by the way, and you can have a combination of two. Mine's more choleric, melancholy, or melancholy, choleric, depending on the day. So we talked about the personalities. Now, let's talk about the emotional needs, which is what we're talking about. When you're facing challenging times, what will help you? I can't eliminate all the stress that comes with a divorce and that upheaval, but what are some things you can do that'll bring you a sense of hope, bring a sense of relief, help you catch your breath as you move through what is a very difficult time in your life? So, all the personalities are gonna get depressed, but they're gonna get depressed for re different reasons. Whitney, that popular sanguine, she's going to get depressed because life's no longer fun. And that popular sanguine likes fun, as well as people, as I said. And trust me, divorce is nothing exciting. Uh, tough, tough time. So emotionally, she likes attention. She likes to interact with people. She likes her approval. And when people do dis uh, distance themselves or disappear, that's very hard on the sanguine personality because they like to share their latest experiences. They think out loud, you know, as they're going through this tough time, what are their options? They bounce their ideas off of others. And so that's something that helps the popular sanguine. And so if you don't have a whole lot of people interacting with you, what can you do for yourself? Well, get part of some kind of community of, in, or group of people who understand what you're going through. People who have an idea what it sometimes feels like to walk around with a big D on your chest. Not that you really do, but we sometimes feel that way. So how can you be part of a community, a divorce care group, uh, a group at your church, Rebuild, which is what I'm going to, talking about today, is a coaching group. We meet over the internet, so you can be any part of the world or the United States. We meet face-to-face, -face, or you can call in, but it's a community of women who get where you are, understand what you're going through, and all the personalities need this, but the popular sanguine needs that support and encouragement. That will help them temporarily distract from their pain. Now, the sanguine likes to have fun, and we know the financial ramifications of divorce can be huge. So they might have liked to go to nice restaurants or shop, shopping, but short term, till you get on your feet, you need to find things that aren't so expensive. Now, let's talk about that perfect melancholy. The perfect melancholy becomes depressed when life's far from perfect and they see no way of straightening it out and organizing it, getting their ducks lined in a row, so to speak. As a melancholy, what you need emotionally is people around you who are sensitive because you're very sensitive. You can feel what's underneath the surface. Uh, whether people are angry or sad, although sometimes we don't always pick, we know something's underneath, but we don't always get it right. But you need time to be alone, to pray, to get still, to journal. I did a lots of journaling. You, of all the personalities, probably really know the depths of despair, although all of them are dealing with the sadness in a big way. So here's an example of one woman who was in Rebuild who, oh, as we went through the personalities, realized she had the melancholy personality. And she didn't have a whole lot of strength, which we often do, because the grieving in these difficult times drain us physically, mentally, emotionally. So she was having a hard time getting moving forward. But when I talked about the personalities and the fact that the melancholy likes their personal space organized, they can sleep better at night if it's organized. So she, as she was listening, thought, you know what? I'm gonna go out to my kitchen. I'm gonna take one shelf and I'm gonna take everything off of it, clean it off and organize it. And she said, uh, so she did that. And then here's what happened. She had a little bit more energy. When she saw that one shelf and how it was organized, 
That was empowering to her. And she decided she was going to do another shelf. Well, between that and the next time we met in Rebuild, she not only did all the cabinets and shelves in her kitchen, but there was this box with this light that she was going to hang up over her dining room table for at least a year. And so she hung that light over her table, sent us all a picture on our private Facebook page, and we celebrated because this is huge. And so in the journey, even these little things, like in her case, wanting to organize, straighten out things, even though the big picture, she couldn't straighten out everything in her life. So that's, we talked about the popular sanguine, the perfect melancholy. Now let's talk about the powerful choleric. Well, people like Sam, which I talked about, they're going to get depressed when life is out of control because the powerful choleric likes to be in control. And when they have little hope of getting on top of a situation, that's very difficult for them. Because of all the personalities, they're gonna have a tough, a tough time because they can't always distract themselves, which the choleric, if they can't control things, like to distract or move away. But a divorce, the reality's there and you have to face it, even though you don't want. Well, here's what he said. Why is it I'm a stable, logical person? I'm not crazy, but why do I feel during this time in my life like I'm losing it, as in falling apart? And here's the truth. He felt that way because he was losing it. It being in a choleric life control. And they hate that feeling. The idea of cooperating with their painful feelings uh, that come with a shattered marriage, that is not attractive at all. The idea of having to face all those losses, that's not something they want. So what do you, as a powerful choleric, emotionally need? Well, is there a trip you wanted to take, even a little short one that you just haven't made the time to do? Well, then take that time. Because wallowing despair is not your style. So is there something you can work on an area a little harder, exercise more, start a new project? Those things can help lift your spirits emotionally. Those things where you make a little bit of a difference and see it in your life, see what you're achieving and accomplishing, can empower you and give you more energy. But here's the truth for the choleric. Long term, you do have to have time where you face the reality and go through those painful feelings, even though you do want to get it behind you as soon as you can. And then finally, uh, the peaceful phlegmatic, they're going to get life, uh, get depressed when life is filled with all kinds of problems, all kinds of conflict that they can't ignore. Emotionally, a peaceful phlegmatic needs peace and quiet. Like the melancholy, they're more introverted. They're recharged by time alone. So Jack, our peaceful phlegmatic, uh, once uh, made a statement that his friends, just listening to him, wore him out. And he said, you know, I mentioned earlier, he doesn't like to share his feelings. He'd rather keep them inside. And he said, I have trouble getting out of bed in the morning. I like to take naps if I can. And I like to go to bed early. He needs lots of rest. But he also needs time alone. And for Jack, it was going for a hike by himself or simply playing the piano. That added a little bit to his already low level of energy. So as a peaceful phlegmatic, yeah, you, you don't want to confront all the problems at, at once. It's hard. But you're, pick one issue, one thing that you need to confront right now. What's the most important issue? And just remember what might look as a conflict to you, to other peaceful phlegmatics, it just might be a disagreement. But whatever it is, deal on one thing at a time. Focus on that. Uh, so now we're moving on. I got distracted a moment. I, I saw a question. Uh, so some, if you're interested in learning more 
like I said, this is just a sneak peek of how understanding the personalities and what you emotionally need can really help you move forward. I see Betty said she slept a lot uh, and she gave herself plenty of time uh, to sit still and be quiet. And that, that's critical. It really is. Um, in fact, one person, uh, Peaceful Phlegmatic, while we were just finishing that, um, stuffed her emotions, numbed them for years because you know what? They're really painful and you think they're going to kill you. I know I did. And I thought the anger was going to kill somebody else. These are intense emotions. Well, this particular Peaceful Phlegmatic basically shoved them under the carpet and ignored them. And so as part of Rebuild, she started moving forward. At times it was like, I don't know if I'm going to make this. Am I going to survive it? But she continued on, and at one point she, re she realized that even though she had stuffed that pain and blocked herself from experiencing it, it took a lot of energy to keep those emotions down. And once she felt the sadness, the anger, the shame, the guilt, whatever it was, she also started experiencing positive emotions like hope and joy and peace. So here again, get a group that will help you, encourage you, support you during what is a difficult time. So again, understanding your personality and its emotional needs is supreme. There's a saying that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. But I want to tell you the grass is greener when it gets what it needs. Whether that's sunlight, water, lime, nutrients like ox uh, nitrogen, when it gets what it needs. So what does your personality need? An opportunity for excitement in the midst of the pain? A chance to withdraw and sort through things? time to work or exercise harder, or just moments to pull rent away. Get still from the harsh reality of your life. Because doing that for yourself, and that's self-care, doing that for yourself can make the difference between simply existing after separation and divorce and or beginning to slowly rebuild your life. So let me talk a little bit about rebuild. Our next group starts January 7th on Tuesday. The last day to register is tomorrow, Sunday, January 5th. If you want to know details, like we meet every other week, we meet six sessions over three months. If you want, you can add to your rebuild package with private session. In, yeah private coaching by me uh, between sessions because I realized somebody said well who does the coaching I do the coaching for the individual sessions but go there find out well what does it cost what are the dates we meet we meet over the internet uh, face to face on zoom or you can call in if you don't want to be seen or you can block out your video but we get to see each other. We get to have that face-to-face -face interaction as we support each other along the way. So if you're lost and you're confused and wondering how you get here and even more importantly how you begin again, consider rebuild after divorce. It will make all the difference in your life. So let's answer some questions. I see one question is is there going to be a spring session, a rebuild? I'm not sure I can do the January to March group. Um, I think there probably will. Right now, I have not set dates. At the very least, I'll do one from June to August. But if you're interested and I get enough people, I will do one March to uh, May. So the best way to find out when whenever the next rebuild is, is to go to georgiaschafer.com, scroll down to the bottom of the page, and sign up for my email newsletter. Because when the next groups are offered, or on my Facebook page, they'll be announced. But 
moving forward, start now, even if several people have gone through Revealed more than once, because you learn you're at different places along the way. And if you want the details for Rebuild, go to georgiaschafer.com forward slash rebuild. And I'll give you everything you want to know. And if you still have questions, email uh, the person that's listed there, the link to email questions. So what other questions do you have about this journey, which can be a tough one? Again, this is all about self-care. It's taking the time. Because sometimes when you're divorced and you still have young children, you think, I don't have any time. I hear so many people, when they are separated or divorced, they say one of two things. Either, you know, I started dating when I was 14 or 16 or 18, and I never really got to know who I was. Or there's some people that say, yeah... I had a sense of who I was, but after all the difficulty, sometimes an emotionally destructive or abusive, physically abusive relationship, I lost who I was. I don't even know who I am anymore. So that's one of the things we also do in uh, Rebuild, is give you a sense. Who did God create you to be? Because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And so who are you? What are your strengths? And how can you live them out in your life and use them someday after you move through this period of rebuilding and beginning again? How can you best use them to serve others? All right, another question. Do certain personalities tend to have a healthier response to divorce? Oh, well, when I think of all the personalities, I can see part of them, uh, a healthy response in each. And what I mean by that, in the popular sanguine, the healthy thing they do is they know they want to be around people. And all the personalities cannot isolate themselves. The worst you can do is isolate yourself and stay away from people because you got hurt in a relationship and you can heal in a relationship. So don't isolate yourself. So that's what the popular sanguine does that's healthy. The peaceful uh, phlegmatic, these are the low-key, kind of Mr. Rogers kind of thing. The thing they do right is there is there's a simple, uh, how do I want to say that? They understand they can't control everything. And that that there's this way of just having to move through it and accept what is. Now, that's not easy for some of the other personalities, but the peaceful phlegmatic's more easily able to get there. The perfect melancholy, I think because they're so sensitive, they're going to feel, you know, they're going to be aware of their feelings, the depth of their sadness, how they're angry, how they feel guilty about what they didn't do or could have done, the shame of being divorced and having people look at you like, what did you do wrong? Uh... The peace, oh yeah, perfect melancholy, they're going to do a, a better job of accepting those feelings, cooperating with them, and dealing with those. And then finally, the powerful choleric, what do they do that's healthy? Well, they know that they at some point need to move forward. Now, they want to rush it, but they know that in order to move forward, there's certain little steps or big ones that they need to take along the way. Uh, and so they're going to look at what can they do. They're going to get help because very few of us have learned how to rebuild after loss. So the powerful choleric, what they're going to do is they're going to look for the person who understands that the expert, who can give them skills and strategies, which is what we share and rebuild to help them move on. Oh, uh, I thought I had another question here, but I'm not seeing one. Uh, other questions? Because once you start identifying your personality. And, oh, I want to say one more thing. A lot of the reactions I get when people begin understanding who they are, their personality, 
don't be surprised if you have what we call personality envy. In other words, you don't like your personality. You want to be that popular, outgoing, high energy, creative, knows no strangers, popular sanguine. And, but you're not. You're more the layback, peaceful, phlegmatic. We need all the personalities because we need the peaceful, phlegmatic who's who settles all the other personalities, the sanguine who's jumping off the walls, the melancholy who's going down and then finally comes back up, and the choleric who just wants to take charge. All these personalities bring energy, whereas the peaceful phlegmatic brings them down. So I don't want any of you, when you do figure out what your natural personality is, who God created you to be, don't wish you were somebody else because they all have strengths. And all those strengths, if you're not careful to refine them and keep them within boundaries, when carried to an extreme, become weaknesses. The choleric, you know, can be the snow plow and plow people over. The sanguine can be so spontaneous they can't focus on a task and get done what needs to be done. Uh, the peaceful phlegmatic, they just push everything under the rug sometimes and want to keep it there so they have to face. Uh, oh, Laura says, I masked sanguine for so long because I wanted people to love melancholy me. Oh, <laughs> a light just about fell down here. Yes, people do mask their personalities uh, at times. Uh and you might have learned behavior. You might have grown up with a choleric parents, but you're a melancholy. And, you know, it was always about achieving, getting things done, setting goals, facing challenges. So there are certain masks that we learn, uh, habits we've learned over the time, but it's not necessarily the person God created us to be. And sometimes that is a process. But again, it starts with taking one of these assessments and then have somebody go through with you. Because I never give an assessment uh, personality to a client and then just say, here's your results, read them and take it. I help people apply it to their life. What does it mean for them? How, what can they learn to move forward in their lives? Um... What we can learn from other personality types is another question represented in the rebuild group. Uh, good question. Well, we'll learn from the sanguine how it is, what it's like to reach other, out to others and connect, even though you haven't met them before. Uh, to be that outgoing person, we'll learn how they can be creative. And as you're all struggling with issues and problems, they can see something in the moment that maybe nobody else thought of, then that melancholy in the group, they're going to be the sensitive person. They're going to feel your sadness or your anger. They're going to accept the full range of your emotions. And I'll tell you, when you're going through a divorce, you can experience all the emotions and you can experience them within seconds. So it's really up and down. The choleric, they're going to help you. They'll challenge you. They'll maybe see ways you can take a next step forward. They'll help you focus on what's important. And then the peaceful phlegmatic, they're going to just be that easygoing person that makes you feel comfortable, gives you that sense of peace, and brings down some of the emotional volatility that the other uh, personalities can experience. Hey, uh, when I started my life over, Marita says one of the hardest things was not having a support team. Yes, I hear that all the time. I just heard this week uh, from a couple of people who signed up for a rebuild that starts on Tuesday, January 7th. People, uh, one person said, I didn't even know there was such a thing as rebuild. Uh, you know, I just happened to find it because somebody saw your Facebook Live earlier, told me to watch it. I didn't even know it existed. And another person said, there's just nobody in my community that's going through a divorce who understands what that feels like, the challenges we're facing, 
uh, many times our married friends who I don't know about you, but when I was married, most of my friends were married and I had to start some brand new relationships, which wasn't easy. So again, here's a group, a group of Christian women. We're talking about biblical worldview. Do you know what a healthy Christian divorced woman looks like in today's culture? Because I can tell you I didn't. I had no clue what that looked like. And that's one of the things I learned as I had to rebuild my life. Good questions. Anything else? Marita, I talked earlier about Wired That Way, so if you want to put your link for that, uh, I talked at the very beginning about Wired That Way and how it's one of the most user-friendly, inexpensive uh, personality profiles out there to help you get started and get a handle on who you are and who are the people in your life. All right, I'll give a second here for any more questions. If not, again, if you want to help somebody else rebuild, let them know about Rebuild, which helps women move from that shattered marriage towards a life of wholeness. That helps them. It gives you a roadmap. We talk about five steps of rebuilding. The first step is give yourself time to grieve. And then what are some practical strategies that you do that. The second step is you want to reframe your situation from a new perspective. Not easy. How can you see your situation from a different angle? The third step is you want to take your pain and begin to transforming it. You will, if you don't dodge the tough times, you will be a better person. You will have inner strength. You will have a courage you never had before, a compassion. So then, after you move through those three steps, you're not done rebuilding because you need to now take a risk, and rebuilding is a risk. Loss brings pain, but i got to tell you, so does new growth. And when you face a lot of losses and you realize there's a lot of things you can't control, taking that calculated risk, facing your fears and stepping out there is another step you need support and uh encouragement for. And then the final step after you've moved all f through all four of those, and by the way, it's not an overnight experience, is use what you've learned. Share your gifts, who God created you to be, your experiences to help others. So I just want to close. If you have any questions, you can post them on the Facebook Live, but I sure would love you to be part of Rebuild. Again, tomorrow, January 5th is your last day to sign up. So thank you for being here, and I hope to see you or hear from you and help those who are divorced in your life. Look at them with a new sense of compassion because it is a hard spot to be in. Take care. Well, my live doesn't want to turn off.